Oui, oui. Good afternoon, viewers of Seven News Television. We are quite happy that you guys are over there watching a program known as The Experts. Most of the times, we get sick. We don't know what to do. When we get to the hospitals, the doctors always ask us to get to the labs to find out what is really the problem. Today, there is a lot of evolution in the medical field. At times, we have telemedicines. But that is not our point of interest this afternoon. We are going to talk on the evolution of laboratory diagnosis and job prospects in this discipline. With us as a specialist, a consultant of molecular medical diagnosis, he is no other person than Dr. Innocent Ngong. Good afternoon, Doctor. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Takam Bisong. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to be here in uh, your expert program, yeah. which uh, so many people are already conversing to be part of it. So I'm happy and privileged that I'm here to share with you today. We are talking on the evolution of laboratory diagnosis and the job prospects in this discipline. Before we get to that, who is Dr. Innocent Gong? Uh, Innocent Gong, as you rightly say, is a researcher in molecular diagnosis. Uh, in other words, we can be talking about second generation diagnosis with uh, precise uh, results. So uh, I'm a, a researcher in this field now for a couple of years and I'm also working with the government. Mm -hmm. I'm an assistant lecturer in uh, six private universities in Cameroon and abroad. Okay. So in brief, uh, that's uh, Innocent Gong that you're talking about. Okay, Dr. Innocent Gong, when you talk of laboratory diagnosis, what is it all about? Uh, laboratory diagnosis, uh, which I would like to add the word medical laboratory diagnosis mm -hmm. because they are various, is uh, the scientific explanation or impetus that we put into medical uh, and clinical examinations. So we don't only have symptomatic uh, diagnosis, which is actually the first step, but we go further to prove the, the symptoms by a scientific test that can be verified, that is the same, that is unique, that is precise, and any other medical laboratory uh, technician or scientist can come up with the same results no, everywhere in the world. So that's uh, medical laboratory diagnosis, which uh, has come to revolutionize medical treatment, because we used to have empirical treatment, which from the physical outlooks of the patient, yeah. we can post a diagnosis yeah. and say he's suffering from yeah. malaria. He's yeah. having high fever, temperatures, uh, 39, 40 degrees within, we might suggest it is malaria. malaria yeah. But uh, fever can be the cause by several illnesses. So laboratory diagnosis comes into to be precise that you can have fever, but it is hepatitis. Yeah. You might have fever, it is a diarrhea. You might have fever, and it is malaria. Yeah. So laboratory diagnosis come in to help the medical doctor to be precise in diagnosis. Okay, doctor, for the past few years, how has this medical laboratory diagnosis evolved in Cameroon? Yes, uh, it has evolved because we used to have our routine diagnosis with, uh, with the famous uh, posture of a laboratory technician in front of a microscope uh, analyzing. Yeah. 
but we have moved from that, which is what every country should expect, to a much more precise uh, diagnosis, which is now molecular diagnosis, which in terms is facilitating treatment. All right. For example, if you have, if from our normal routine diagnosis, someone is having hepatitis C, mm -hmm. that alone is not enough to start treatment because there are virulent strains of hepatitis C and they are non virulent. That means the ones that can cause illness mm -hmm. and the ones that cannot. Right. So, uh, molecular diagnosis will come in now to precise which type of strain that we have. So we don't know, let's say you have hepatitis C, okay. we move further to say you have this type of hepatitis C which can cause illness. We are talking of medical laboratory diagnosis. Is it that it is current when everybody is sick or in a particular set of people or group of people? Yes, you can only know that you are sick when you must have done your medical report. Mm -hmm. Because uh, majority uh, have a physical presentation that they are not sick, but in essence they are they are ill more than those who are even in the hospital. So it's when we must have gone through diagnosis that we can know if somebody is ill or not. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it might not certainly be what you thought you were suffering from. from yeah. You might have fever, get to the hospital. That's why I always encourage everyone to go to the hospital. And in end of that, you have a different illness. The fever was just symptomatic to might be a bigger illness yeah. that you did not know. That's true. So uh, that is where we encourage everyone to to do regular medical analysis. It will go a long way to curb down the so, Doctor, how can uh, this diagnosis be facilitated? Yes, it can be facilitated uh, in various ways. Uh, first of all, we are talking about next generation diagnosis, diagnosis yeah. or evolution of diagnosis, diagnosis yeah. which has as prospect to be fast, to be precise, and to be having the quality assurance yeah. required by the World Health Organization. Organization. So, for it to be facilitated, yes, we need to, first of all, get to the hospital. Secondly, we need qualified personnel. And uh, next generation diagnosis rely on heavy duty equipment. Okay. So, all those factors will facilitate uh, the evolution that we are witnessing in some structures in the country. There is this uh, fast test strips that people use today to carry out a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Is it that um, important or how efficient are those test strips to carry out diagnosis or test on people? Yes, uh, each test is always having its advantages and its inconveniences. The fast, uh, the rapid Kids, yeah, uh, which uh, they usually call the uh, TDRs, have an advantage that you can work with so many patients in a day. Yeah, considering a big town like Yaounde, and uh, let me take a brief example: the rapid diagnosis test for malaria will take between two to three minutes yeah. to for you to have results. But the golden uh, test for malaria is microscopy, yeah. which will take between 15 to 20 minutes. It means that in an hour, you, you can only carry out four tests with uh, the golden, golden test, test, microscopy. Yeah. So in, in a day, you have eight working hours, you can only work on 16 Six samples. Steps. Yeah. But with the rapid yeah. test, you can after every three minutes you you give results so it means that you might end up working with uh, more than 200 patients a day that's a big advantage of those rapid diagnosis but they have is their limits are also there 
So can you tell us about their limits? Their limits are that they give you a, an overview of the illness. Okay. They don't go to specifics. For example, with malaria, you need to know the parasite load. Yeah. That test will not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. It will just tell you that this person is sick. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the, the load, if usually we quantify it, malaria 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, to show you the, the load, the, load okay. the intensity of the illness. That will not be, uh, the rapid test will not be able to, to, do, to, that. to do that. You were talking of microscopic tests or diagnosis. Can you enlighten our viewers what microscopic diagnosis is all about? Yes, uh, microscopy uh, from, from Linux, as we have always been talking, is a golden test in medical laboratory uh, analysis. So each laboratory technician or medical scientist knows that the main key uh, equipment is a microscope. Yeah. So which we, the test in the microscope, we carry out in two phases. You have a fresh, fresh analysis. I don't want to, yeah. no, I want to, 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 to use, uh, <laughs> I don't want to go. Detail. In detail. So okay. we can take fresh analysis, which you can observe this water for bacteria or parasites, yeah. just from the, the, the sample itself. Oh, right. And they will also have the second phase of microscopy, which is coloration. Because we might not be able to get the details about a particular organism. So we use specific colors yeah. or stains that we we distinguish them from the background, which will permit us now to better view the, the, either the parasite or bacteria. So that is uh, microscopy. Uh, actually, we're using that in a laboratory, mostly now microscopy. We use it in malaria, yeah. malaria diagnosis, which the rapid test, as you rightly yeah. say, Mr. Bisson, is uh, trying to overshadow that yeah. because microscopy is slow it, it doesn't it cannot take a good number of patients per day and then we we also we also use uh, microscopy commonly in parasite uh, uh, detection in okay. stool all right uh, with diarrhea cases and uh, so that is where we use malaria uh, microscopy so frequent okay dr innocent uh, let's just load this report viewers of seven news television this is your program experts our topic this day is the evolution of laboratory uh, diagnosis and job prospects report by Yulang Angong concerning HIV and AIDS. Face à la presse, dans cette salle des conférences de la Direction contre la maladie, les épidémies et pandémies du ministère de la Santé publique à Yaoundé, Florence Zé, sous-directeur de lutte contre le VIH-Sida et IST au ministère de la Santé publique, s'est voulu rassurante en présentant les nouvelles stratégies de prise en charge du VIH selon l'approche « Traiter tous au Cameroun ». La nouvelle stratégie pour l'atteinte des objectifs 90-90-90, c'est l'approche « Traiter tous ».« Traiter tous » qui veut juste dire qu'on donne l'opportunité à à tous les Camerounais de pouvoir bénéficier du test de dépistage. Et ce test de dépistage est 500 francs, mais cependant gratuit pour les femmes enceintes, les enfants de moins de 19 ans. Le gouvernement, par le biais du ministère de la Santé publique, veut ainsi montrer sa détermination à éradiquer d'ici 2030 le VIH-Sida. L'impact escompté est celui de réduire le taux de décès et de nouvelles infections du VIH à l'horizon 2020. 
Elle est en cours de mise en œuvre. Elle est en cours de mise en œuvre, mais en termes de statistiques, je ne saurais vous dire exactement où on en est. Est pas? Mais elle est en cours de mise en œuvre et l'objet de cette réunion que nous venons d'avoir, c'est justement que vous nous aidez à booster, n'est-ce pas Parce que comme j'ai essayé de le dire au cours de la réunion, hein, la lutte contre le VIH, ce n'est pas l'affaire du seul secteur santé. Et dans la lutte contre le VIH, le, 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 le secteur de la communication joue un très grand rôle. Cette conférence de presse a donc été l'occasion d'informer le grand public sur la disponibilité des dépistages et de la prise en charge des malades à travers le triangle national. Thanks very much, Roland Agong, for that report. We all know that HIV and AIDS is ravaging our society today. The World Health Organization and the government of Cameroon is doing everything to eradicate AIDS, especially when it comes to the mother to child transmission that it has done a marvelous job in that. Viewers of Seven News Television, if you are just switching on your television set, this is your program, The Experts. Our topic for the day is the evolution of laboratory diagnosis and job prospects for the country. With us, as a specialist, a consultant of molecular medical diagnosis, he is Dr. Innocent Gum. Doctor, you just followed that report by a reporter, Angong, Yolan. So, they are talking of the rapid HIV and AIDS test kits. How efficient is that kit in our society? Uh, uh, I would like to, first of all, uh, thank uh, Mr. Angong for that report. Uh, HIV has taken, is progressing uh, in with the results that we have. The results are proving that the, there is effectiveness in the methods put in place okay. to to fight against the ill and uh, if you were coming back to the laboratory yeah we we have talked about rapid tests, rapid tests. Mm. and uh, microscopic um, uh, microscopic for hiv actually uh, microscopic we always start talking about bacteria a larger particles pathogenic particles uh, with uh, hiv is a virus so we just start talking about serology, that's rapid test. Rapid test. So microscope does not really play a role in, uh, in HIV diagnostics, except to look at other factors like malaria, in case the patient is suffering from other illnesses. Yeah. But for HIV itself, we don't use uh, microscope. Okay. Okay. So and uh, what is the various kits that we are using? There are so many. Uh, approved by World Health Organization, so I don't stand any chance to discredit yeah. their viability, uh, authenticity. So uh, what I can say is that there, there's an algorithm which permits us to minimize the the possibility of giving false results. Right. That is, uh, even in a, a, a low a low cost laboratory we can put together two or three tests mm. in case test a from a particular company is positive the results are positive we still bring in the second test if it is possible positive we bring in the, the, th the third to minimize the stigma mm -hmm. of uh, declaring results that are not true, true. and but World Health Organization have but an alternative a, is uh, talking about using two different methods, not two different tests. Yes, okay. That means you use uh, serology. The next one you need to use is uh, use antibody tests, and the third one is you use a molecular test. I see. Different different methods. But you know we are, are not 
in a developed country. So we try to get to have quality results using little yes, means. Yeah. So we put in place three different methods, though they are still of the same group. Yeah. But it will permit us to to come out with with viable results. Doctor Innocent, when we people go to the hospital, we hear the doctors talk of go and do culture and sensitivity tests. What is it all about? Yeah, we in in the hospital culture and sensitivity test with our level is only for bacteria okay. analysis. But we develop countries in a category A laboratory, which I happen to have been a laboratory technician in the Queen's Medical Center in London and in Nottingham. Mm -hmm. We can culture virus and we culture parasites. Parasite. Okay. But in Cameroon, we culture only bacteria. Bacteries. So you can culture virus, bacteria, and parasites. But here we culture only bacteria. Because the culture of virus is demands a lot of technology, which we don't yet grasp it in Africa. So uh, because if you can culture a virus, then you can produce a virus. Okay. So that's where, that's actually the, the breaking point, the cutting edge technology in laboratory analysis. Right. So when you reach that level of culture of virus, that means you are the end of it. So what is the essence of the test? Is it to determine the type of drugs that a patient ought to take? Yes, uh, with culture in uh, generally, in in Cameroon, we do culture stool for to know which type of bacteria the patient is suffering from. So we we do culture uh, sputum, uh, what they call it in French crusher. Mm -hmm. So with the with the stool is is mainly to 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 know if you have any enterobacteria like uh, cholera, escherichia, mm -hmm. and then f so that the medical, you can then advise, propose the drug that the medical doctor should use. Okay. Because each bacteria is having its treatment. And with sputum, the culture and sensitivity test is mostly to check if the person might be having a, a microbacterium what we call tuberculosis okay so the the different different samples we culture them to look for different different things i see and also the sensitivity test you also the sensitivity test here is generally what we call antibiogram it permits us to know which back, uh, antibiotics can be effective right. in the treatment so we do that in the laboratory to propose uh, to the medical doctor Instead of using, using uh, penicillin, use uh, but but uh, uh, peptin, right. which is not which is not resistant, which the bacteria is not resistant to. You have talked about uh, cultural sensitivity. Can we talk a little bit about immunology test, or if you don't mind that? Well, yeah, of course. We 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 will talk about immunology tests. Okay. Uh, immunological tests here in the laboratory. Mostly we we start looking uh, on the ability of the human body to fight against illnesses, to know how your defense mechanisms can better defend itself naturally. naturally. If you take the case of uh, HIV, which I have talked about, the immunological test that you carry out is to know the 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 CD4 cells, yeah, yeah. which are defensive cells. When there are many, it means that your body can better defend itself. Mm -hmm. When they are low, it means that alone your body will be unable to defend itself. 
that is when we might not have external support from drugs okay from chemical agents doctor after talking about microscopic cultural sensitivity immunological test can this medical laboratory diagnosis help Cameroonians to have jobs in our country today? Yes, uh, the, the, the job market for medical laboratory sciences is, is growing by the day. And uh, in Cameroon, the first employer for laboratory technicians are public hospitals. Yeah, yeah, right. So that's the first employer that we know and uh, is recru uh, re recruiting uh, laboratory technicians in their numbers. Secondly, we have uh, missionary hospitals, okay. the Baptists, the Catholics, and, uh, and other lay private institutions okay. that also seek the, the attention of medical laboratory science. At first, they were neglected in the hospitals. Yeah which uh, the nurses and the medical doctors thought that with uh, symptoms they can go ahead and treat. Right. But now the experience has shown that they are inevitable. You cannot avoid the medical laboratory te technician in the laboratory. A simple example is in the case of somebody having a malaise, yeah, right. feeling weak, and you are taken to the hospital. The obvious thing is that we might believe that is weak because he lacks glucose in the body. Yeah. But on the contrary, he might be feeling weak while he's having too excess glucose in the body. Yeah. So if this person arrives in the hospital and you give a drip of glucose, the person will have maximum thirty minutes to live to live. That's terrible. To kick the bucket. <laughs> but okay. uh, in case we are making use of laboratory technician, you will first of all test the all person right. and know the quantity of glucose in that person's blood. From there, you know if you give the person simple water all right. or what? water with glucose. Yes. Okay, doctor, let's follow this report. Viewers of Seven News Television, you've heard Dr. Innocent Ngong. At this point in time, let's get this report talking about the medical school in Garua by Levis Ngono. Le lycée classique et moderne de Garoua s'est proposé d'apporter pour la construction intellectuelle des futurs cadres de la santé des salles pour le concours d'entrée à la faculté de médecine et de sciences biomédicales de Garoua. Le climat dans la cour et même dans les salles est relativement calme. Le début de l'examen en séjour est sans fausse note, juste quelques cas d'irrégularité vite résolus. Cette ambiance propice au travail est celle qui permet aux candidats de se donner à fond tout en espérant être parmi les lauréats de la toute première promotion. Les dispositions pratiques ont été prises en amont pour assurer un déroulement sans anicroche du concours. La présence du numéro 1 de la région en est la preuve. Ce matin, c'est la matérialité effective de ce concours à la nouvelle faculté de médecine de sciences biomédicales euh, qui a qui vient d'être euh, placé au niveau de Garoua. Et notre visite ici était de nous assurer effectivement de, du début de ce précieux concours. Euh, nous voulons ici apprécier euh, l'organisation qui a été mise en place et surtout le sérieux dont font preuve aussi les, les candidats. La joie des responsables de la région s'associe à celle des candidats pour la venue de cette école biomédicale qui, désormais leur approche de la famille et finit les déplacements vers d'autres cieux. L'ouverture de la faculté de médecine ici à Garoua nous, bon, nous a ouvert certaines portes pour euh, pouvoir aussi fréquenter dans notre zone 
puisque moi, euh, originaire du nord que je suis, j'aimerais bien être auprès de ma famille. Avant, c'était les gars de sud qui sont plus un peu favorisés par rapport aux gars du nord, puisque le centre de formation est unique là-bas à Yaoundé. La faculté des sciences et biomédicales de Garoua est une occasion pour nous de présenter, car cette faculté est vraiment très importante pour les gars du nord. Pour ce concours, en ce matin du 28 janvier 2018, beaucoup ont répondu présent. Le nombre important de candidats atteste la suffisance de l'intérêt que portent ces candidatures au métier de la santé publique et médicaux. Merci beaucoup, Levis Ngono, pour ce rapport sur la Medical School of Garoua. Viewers of Seven News Television, gradually we are moving to the end of this program. If you are just switching on your TV set, this is the experts. We are talking about evolution of laboratory diagnosis and job prospects. With us is an expert, a specialist, a consultant, Dr. Innocent Gong. Doctor, we've just followed that report by uh, Levis Ngono talking about the medical school in uh, Garoua. And you make emphasis of the fact that uh, our laboratory technicians or we don't have the enabled equipment to get to a certain level. You as a medical doctor who has traveled out of the country, what do you suggest the government to, should do to beef up our hospitals, our schools? Uh, thank you once more uh, for such a quality report on uh, the Faculty of Medicine in uh, Garoua. The first thing, uh, as you must have seen in my CV, I'm a consultant to in, uh, in uh, studies. Yeah. The first thing we should uh, think of doing when medical schools are concerned is the, the means. We need to, to put in place the resources, the human resources, the infrastructure, the the support staff yeah. that is adequate, and if you open it up to to potential experts from abroad, yeah. because it goes a long way to give credibility to the university too. When uh, you have both students and staff coming from various countries should not be limited only to our country because there are so many things that we need to to open up to we're talking about uh, evolution of laboratory diagnosis when i was doing my masters in medical laboratory diagnosis in the university of nottingham such a course was not offered in cameroon i think it was in 2012 the university of boya started a master's course in that. Mm -hmm. So when we bring in experts from from renowned universities, they will be able to to propose uh, exciting cutting edge uh, courses that will go a long way to help us in our topic as we are saying to promote job creation and to open up the students to jobs not only in Cameroon but the world over. Can we talk a little bit about formulating diagnosis? What is it all about? Yes, uh, formulating diagnosis uh, is not actually our field yeah, right. in the laboratory. It's for clinical psychologists all right. that they happen to diagnose uh, illnesses using their own methods. Uh, in mental health, All right. so it's not actually uh, scientific as the medical laboratory analysis that we carry out. So formulated diagnosis is mostly practiced by clinical psychologists. I think uh, there, there should be very few clinical psychologists, it's a specialized field of training there should be very few in Cameroon, in Cameroon yeah. because uh, they, they have a holistic training 
which for now I've not yet seen a course in that in the country. The country, that's true. Mm -hmm. So okay, Doctor Innocent Gong. Uh, how can somebody be diagnosed if the person comes to the hospital and declared a cancer patient? Yes, we we are bound to move to the next generation diagnosis, KTH breakthrough. Uh, diagnosis that will permit us to detect a preventive level yeah. because cancer is mostly a malignant attack on the DNA which is molecular diagnosis as we are talking about yeah. so if you can diagnose HIV the nucleic acid you just need a little effort to be able to diagnose okay. cancer and uh, with the uh, the only way you can prevent cancer through the laboratory in the hospital is to first of all know which dna is affected Correct. before physical manifestation we use the the gene p52 once that gene is activated in humans is a potential uh, tumor that will be co caused at a, after a long while. Mm -hmm. So, but we can detect that gene at early stage and start right. preventive treatment. But in case we don't detect that gene in time, we will not be bound to detect it through the tumor, which will, will be projected uh, which would the growth which will come out after a long while so in a uh, in molecular diagnosis in the laboratory we will be able to detect cancerous cells before they manifest, they manifest. so it's an advantage and i know i think uh, uh professor dom at uh, was working on that very few hospitals in Cameroon have, uh, do own the technical know-how to do that. But there are personnel which I know that can do that. But now we need to put the infrastructure and the will. We need to have the voluntary yeah. will to do that. So how many years should a person take to become a specialist like you? Uh, with uh, me, there are various ways that you can. The first thing, normally, you have to, you must go to the university and uh, a degree in the university in uh, medical lab sciences is uh, four years. Okay. Or you can take, uh, you can pass through the public institutions through medical lab schools. Yeah. You take three years to have uh, what we call advanced level plus two years plus two. then you then move into get a degree and for a master's but for a master's in my field in molecular diagnosis the laboratory is very big i specialize in this small unit in the laboratory okay which is actually the next generation diagnosis because i did not want to do what everybody is doing. doing i needed to move ahead a little bit to distinguish myself, which is what we are calling on every young person to do, to come out from the line, don't follow the the mainstream. Yeah. Yes, distinguish yourself, and then you have you add more value to what you are offering. So after that, you once you have your masters, I think if you are you are still able to resist, you can move in for a PhD. Okay, Dr. Innocent Ngong, what is psychological diagnosis? How do we carry that? How does it go on? Yes, uh, psychological diagnosis, as I said, is, we can say, is symptomatic diagnosis, which from the physical appearance and the, the indicators that you put in place, you should be able to have an idea yeah. of what the patient might be suffering from. 
but it doesn't stop there. We in the laboratory, we expect that once a medical doctor, a nurse, uh, suggests, suspects a particular illness, mm -hmm. he should send the patient to the laboratory for a physical medical laboratory analysis, which can be confirmed, cross-checked, and, and uh, validated everywhere in the world, which everybody is supposed to give the same results. I see. But uh, with psychological diagnosis, you can say it's malaria, another person say it's hepatitis, mm -hmm. and so on. It depends on the individual. But with, within the laboratory, if it is malaria in Cameroon, it should be malaria in Nigeria, Nigeria. and it should be malaria in the USA. It's the same. And what if, uh, in a case where a person goes to the hospital and the person has been given drugs, the person doesn't get well and he comes to the doctor and says, Doctor, my only way I can get well is uh, through injection. Is that another type of psychological diagnosis or psychological treatment? Yes, but uh, in those, some of those cases have been proven not to be ill. Okay. I think uh, research has been carried out with various patients in the laboratory which they have been given placebo people who came to the hospital physically ill mm -hmm. and they have been given placebo placebo can just be like water but having the scent of a particular drug okay take like paracetamol so we you take the scent of of paracetamol but not paracetamol, paracetamol. and just put it in simple simple corn flour make it smell like paracetamol and then you give to patients some of them they were very ill will go home feeling better and they will even come back to and they are, are results that they are no more sick I see so this means that sometimes treatment is psychological psychological because you can expect somebody to be very ill and you give the person a placebo you expect so the, the illness to to aggravate yeah but it instead comes to an end just the fact that my video person has been received by a doctor, mm -hmm. that's why psychology is one of the key courses that medical doctors do uh, study. Yeah. Just because you have been received by a medical doctor in a big hospital, so the person believes that mm, that is fine, and might be it certainly push forward the immune system. Because every illness in the body can be treated by your immune system. Okay. You don't necessarily need to go to the hospital before. And, and before. is that possible? It's possible because the, the drugs that we are giving in the hospital are just to reinforce the immune system. I see. It means that in case the illness, that there are so many illnesses that are treated by your immune system and you never even come to know about them. It's only when the situation is very bad that you you discover that you must go to the hospital. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Viewers of Seven News Television, you've heard from Dr. Innocent. At this point in time, let's follow a report by Mirel Edinma, who is talking about the fitting nature of our environment. Un bac à ordures plein au bord de la route, des ordures versées à même le sol, des caniveaux remplis d'eau sale. Voilà l'aspect que présente l'entrée du marché Acacia en cette matinée ensoleillée. Une situation difficilement vécue par les commerçants de cet espace et qui, du reste, n'est pas isolée à ces seuls endroits. En effet, à l'intérieur du marché, quelque part ici, non loin du secteur des ventes de poulets, se dresse un visage tout à fait similaire. Une fosse remplie d'eau souillée provenant des déchets du camp Sik, située juste à côté, ruisselle le long du marché traversant, étalage et autres comptoirs bondés des marchandises diverses, parfois vendues à même le sol. Preuve évidente d'une grande absence d'hygiène en ces lieux. Nous sommes intoxiqués. 
par le euh, sort du camp sikh, précisément de, de regard qui a été bouché depuis longtemps, il y a de cela, euh, plus, depuis plus d'un an. Voilà donc des années que cette situation dure ici au marché Acacia, sans que rien de concret ne s'efface. Les commerçants continuent de vivre aussi ces calvaires, fait des cohabitations malsaines, des déchets qui se déversent sur le marché, surtout en temps de pluie, rendant tout accès à leur comptoir aussi impossible. Pourtant, tous sont assujettis au paiement des taxes journalières auprès de la commune du 6e arrondissement de Yaoundé. D'ailleurs, lors de notre passage, on y voyait des eaux stayantes dans les rigoles après la pluie qui s'est abattue. Spectacle désolant qui laisse sans voix ses commerçants. Je dirais aux responsables d'hygiène qu'ils continuent, qu'ils lasseraient le processus pour que, nous soyons, pour que cette situation soit débloquée. Bon, puisque euh, c'est une odeur nauséabonde. Et à la longue, ça pourra, ça pourra affecter nos, nos, nos poumons. Puis ça pue. Ça, c'est des odeurs nauséabondes. Il se pourrait bien que cet espace connaisse au cours des années à venir un abandon certain à l'allure où la situation sur le terrain évolue si rien n'est fait effectivement pour résorber ces phénomènes. Thanks, Miriel et Jima with an intern of Seven News Television. Viewers, this is your program, The Experts. We are talking on the evolution of laboratory diagnosis and job prospects in the country. With us today is a consultant, Dr. Innocent Gong. Doctor, you have just followed the reports about the filthy nature of our environment. How is an environment like this affecting or affecting the health of our people? Uh, thank you, Mr. Takam Bisson. Uh, the, the Minister of Public Health today was uh, uh, Mr. Andre Mama Fuda. Uh, he was talking about hygiene, so the concerning cholera, that uh, we should take our personal and environmental hygiene very important right. as you will keep so many illnesses that we could uh, uh, be open to which is just what i will reiterate here that personal hygiene in our in our homes in our environment in our market is a key to keep uh, various uh, illnesses in uh, in big markets like uh, this one the the main illnesses that we can contract from there are direct infections mm -hmm. due to escherichia coli bacteria cholera uh, you you clip clepsilia those are very common infections that we can have in such crowded and dirty environments because they will filter into running water into to our various sources of water running water wells and uh, and uh, pipe borne waters yeah. and that is how it will contaminate us and we will will be bound to go to the hospital. We are actually uh, working on a, on a research project on the link between food sold in filthy markets and how the, the, the environment water is contaminated and how the people infected by this water and the food find themselves finally in the hospital so we are working on a molecular diagnosis which will permit us to know that this specimen was from acacia market yeah it moved to the neighboring fundi water yeah. 
from Fundi water, it was used to 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 irrigate. It used in agriculture for vegetables by the banks of Fundi, mm -hmm. and people who ate the the salad, the fresh the fresh vegetable vegetables were infected, and finally they might find themselves either in Biamasi Hospital, a Fulan. So we are able to isolate those uh, pathogens yeah. in the market, in the Fundi water, and in hospitals. That is a big research program which we are trying to to come out with a reservoir of infection in the town of Yaoundé. The research is still ongoing. We have some interesting results. And uh, within a short time, uh, my prof, uh, Ajaga Gidon, will we we'll have to put it and publish it for for the government to take action on what to do. And who is sponsoring this research you are carrying out? Uh, actually, it's a, it's a the is a research group under Professor Jaga, which uh, he gets little funding because you can see the project can be divided into three. Yeah. Uh, he he gets little funding from all over. And uh, we, are, we cannot forget the personnel which put in uh, human resources, sometimes free, sometimes paid for, to, to come out. So this report on the market of Acacia is quite interesting. And uh, it just goes, once we start projecting uh, such filthy environment in the television, it goes around to tell us how far we need to go with research. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Innocent, for accepting the invitation to be our guest this afternoon. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Tankang Bisong, and uh, I'm particularly pleased and privileged to be with you today, and I'm encouraging all our viewers to, to engage in training in medical lab sciences because you, there are so many jobs. Yeah. Uh, you never lack what to do, and uh, on the contrary, uh, you 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 get a, if you do the cost benefit analysis, it's always better to be a medical laboratory scientist. Once again, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Viso. Viewers of Seven News Television, we have come to the end of this program, The Experts, with the team, The Evolution of Laboratory Diagnosis and Job Prospects in the Country. This program is ending, but Seven News is not ending. Keep on watching Seven News. Viewers, I would like to remind you that for this program to be successful, we have the technical bench that is doing a marvelous work. You have the editors, you have the cameraman, and you have my able AV, who is there to control our buttons. We love you all, and God bless you for that.